go. Let's see how many people are actually going to be watching. Okay, so at the moment we have zero people. They all probably came in at five. Yeah, like, nothing here. Yeah. So what, do they type in their questions? Yep, so we'll see all their questions right up the right side, and then we'll answer them. The nice thing. Hey, four people. Hey, guys. Welcome to the WA3 live stream. Um, looks like we have nine people. We're going to give everybody maybe five minutes to just slowly roll in. Uh, we've only got about 36 subscribers on the channel at the moment, so not a lot of people know that we're doing this. So, for now, go ahead and post something in chat. Make sure that we can see what you guys are uh, saying and asking. For those of you who do not know what a YouTube live stream is, the chat box is on the right side of the screen. Hey, Talid, what's up, Aziz? Hey, we got an entire group here. All right, Marina, Manav, Sin, Jason, Samuel, Andrea, Fred. Hey, there we go. You're having way too much fun. Oh, yeah, I'm having a lot of fun. Hey, Ali. I have a question. I guess uh, your laptop before me. Where is Dr. Mayman's office? Like, uh, so right outside where the conference room is. Take a left. The first door after the lunchroom, and that's his room. Next to the kitchen. Yeah, next to the kitchen. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Okay, Alejandra, Kelly, Michelle, Ashley, Lana, Alba, Isaac, Shada, Kiara, Lord, Alexa. Okay, awesome. Looks like we have quite a few people in here. 34 people already. All right, we're going to give everybody else about uh, three more minutes to get in here before we really start moving on. Um, in that time, I'll go ahead and tell you what I've been doing today. So last week, I uh, prepared some samples for cryo-EM, right? Went to Baylor, got them frozen, ready to go. And their PI over there at Baylor was like, hey, I like it. I need you to do something for me. I need you to purify some integrins off of platelets, right? So what I'm doing right now is purifying integrins from platelets, right? So here's the platelets, and we're smushing them up, getting the membrane fractions out of the platelets. All right. So throughout the stream, you'll see me just crunching down on something right here. Um, that's what I'm doing. He's actually making banana sundaes. Yes. That's not yeah. Nothing to do with integrins or platelets. <laughs> Making the banana Sunday for after the stream, you know? Right. All right, so we have 47 people. It's been three minutes. We'll Two more minutes, and we'll start. Let's see. How are you guys been doing? Doing okay? Everything's going all right? I hope you guys are okay. I miss you guys. For the people in my class, I miss you all. For the people in other classes, I miss you too, but I don't miss you as much as the ones in my class. Don't mean to be hurtful. So when are they going to start asking questions? Oh, it says boring at home. All right. So whenever you guys are asking questions, um, if you type something in and we don't immediately respond to you, it's because we have a little bit of a lag on our side for the chat. Um, let's see. All right. All right. So. Anything amazing happened to anybody in the past week or so while we're waiting for the other people to roll in? Anything amazing? But you don't miss me. You miss Micah, but you don't miss me. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm sure they miss you, like, deep in their hearts, you know? Got Corona? I hope that's a meme. I hope that's a joke. I hope you didn't get Corona. Zara, I hope you're okay. Getting paid not to go to work. Hey, there we go. I always miss you, Mike. Oh, toilet paper is gone in every store. Hey, Carl, how you doing? <laughs> um, By the way, we threw your flies away in the Dowalder lab, just so you know, my Carl. We moved them, but to the trash. Oh, yikes. It's okay, Carl. <laughs> I sold toilet paper a hundred dollars for toilet paper. Lord, make sure you're doing that like 
under the radar because I'm pretty sure you can get arrested. But nice job. Nice job. I approve of that. When I said that, I'm in no way connected with the university. Let's see. They were going bad anyways. Seems wise. No. Oh. That's worth oh, okay. it. Okay, okay. Let's see. Well, let's start asking questions. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Okay, so we got 63 people in here. It's been five minutes and 28 seconds. We're gonna head and move on to the question and answer round. So, um, first things first, let's go over what's been happening with the class. All right, one, you should be taking away all of your things from the fly lab. We cannot force you or ask you to come get these things. However, if at any time you are able to come get your journal and your stuff from the fly lab, please come and get it because the only other alternative is to cut your locks and we don't want to have to do that. Right, so uh, I was just in the fly lab and um, still a lot of the lockers have locks on. And so if you can come and unlock them, that'd be great. Alternatively, just email me the combination and I'll unlock them and take out the supplies and put them away. Okay. And it does look like we have Zara confirming that she does not have coronavirus. That's awesome. Awesome, awesome. Okay, WA3 is double spaced. Yes, WA3 is double spaced. WA3 is double spaced. There's the template for you in the WA3 folder that you can use. Oh, there we go. There we go. So it's, um, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. It's already there. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Anything else? Uh, any other? Oh, bonus crosses, guys. Yeah. Bonus crosses are dead. There's no more bonus crosses. Yeah, I sent that. I think, Unfortunately. I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, Micah is... is uh, Just to reiterate? Right, reiterating, but this is all in the emails that I've been sending out. Make sure that your U of H email is working because that's the only way I can communicate with you guys when I send out announcements. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so Cynthia says, what if we haven't taken pictures yet? I, so if you haven't taken pictures yet, but have you if you've scored the progeny and you know what the results of your experiments are, you can at the very least describe what you yes. saw, yes. right? So you can, and this is for everybody. If you if you were there, you know what your results were, you can describe those without photographs. Mm -hmm. Now, something that we might try to do is to post some pictures of, of results from complementation crosses, but it's difficult to say if they're gonna match your cross, for yeah. example, so. Um, so going off of that, for WA3, you should have two figures that have pictures, right? You should have the first figure that includes a wild type and a mutant, right? Mm -hmm. So the same one from WA1. The second one and the new one is going to have a picture of your mutant fly, a picture of a wild type fly, and a picture of the comp flies, all right? Hopefully you've gotten those four pictures. If you haven't, don't sweat it. Just give us that picture, give us that figure and say, hey, this is what we have in this figure and explain in the results and discussion why you are missing four to six pictures on one figure. Um, Let's see, okay, so it's going by fast now. Can group members, okay, is it still 15 pages? Yes, can group members share the same chromosomal diagrams for WA3 or does it have to be different between members? Yes, it has to be different between members. And let me give you a nice example of what a chromosomal diagram should look like. Um, so the papers are individual efforts. You can't really copy from each other. All you can do is share the data. How you represent that data in terms of diagrams, images, charts, graphs, whatever, is up to you. You can't, we can't have you copying each other's uh, charts. Uh, let's see, while he's looking for whatever he's looking for, let's see. So Michelle asks, do we use our made up mutant name in the paper? Or do we use our mutant code? Um, Micah, do you have any? Um, I, I, you Ooh, you shouldn't. Good, yeah, okay, that's a good okay. one. So do not ever, ever, ever use any kind of number from our lab in your paper. Ever, ever. Charles will take off points. You might not even deduct points. Sarah will not like that. Casey, I don't know. But, um, so what should they do? Don't. Please don't use those so, numbers. So, so they should use the actual mutant yeah, name. Yeah, use the actual right. mutant name because we gave it to you, right? So you have that information now. It's all on Blackboard. Mm -hmm. And if your TA probably already gave it to you as well. 
Okay, a uh, chromosomal diagram, right? So, what you should give me for a chromosomal diagram, right? You should have a nice little depiction of your parent, right? Crossed with chromosome of your mutant or whatever other fly you cross it with, right? Then you go down here and you tell me the progeny that came out of it, right? So for the first cross, you'd only have one progeny if you were recessive or two uh, classes of progeny if you were uh, sexing recessive, right? Sexing for some more recessive. And then for the other crosses, whether you had eight classes or four classes, you would continue drawing me the um, different pictures for each, right? So this is kind of like what your chromosomal diagram would look like. Is this where they also would put their... Uh, yeah. Their yep. So you would write down, say, uh, you had the white gene, right? So you had a white mutant, white, white, minus, minus. There we go. That's how a, you would write the chromosomal diagram for a white mutant, right? You can so, also go out to put chromosomes 2, 3, and 4 on there as well. You don't really need to, especially for flies that don't have anything to do with chromosomes 2, 3, and 4. Um, the other thing, for sex-linked recessive genes, you need to denote the uh, Y chromosome. Like, So while you're doing that, Hamza is asking, yes, you're going to use the actual mutant name that we've already provided you. Case you the actual name of the mutant that you have, not not a code and not your nickname. Mm -hmm. Um. Okay. What's the next one, Mike? Oh, they're flying by. It Hello. Is I have like thirty Aziz. Please don't give me a thirty-page paper. You can give me like honestly, this one is like twenty pages, and you're good. Including figures. Right? Including figures. Yeah. Including figures. What if we haven't taken pictures yet? That's fine for the complication cross. Blah blah blah. What do we have to do with figures? Do we use made-up mutant names? Okay. So you guys are asking a lot of the same questions. Can you please tell the TAs to revise our paper? What do you mean revise? What do you mean, re yeah. Uh, oh, are you saying the WA2? It's getting done. Don't worry. So, it's getting done. Yeah, and we need to be a little patient because everybody's been impacted yeah. by the... Um, so. so there's a lot of things that the TAs get told at the very end of the chain. Um, and so we've had some things happen in our personal graduate lives that have mm -hmm. kept us away from grading. Um, we're getting your stuff done as quickly as possible. Most likely the grades will be released relatively soon if they haven't been released already. And some of you have grades, some of you don't have grades. That just means that for my class that I've graded, I've graded like half the class. So half of you are not going to have any grades there. So let me also address one thing. In, in terms of the chromosomal diagrams, what Micah described is perfectly acceptable. Uh, but remember, the way I showed you guys how to do it in lecture by actually writing out the genotypes is also perfectly acceptable, where you write out um, using just letters, right? Like uh, using the white white mutant again, it would be white minus, I mean, W minus colon plus colon plus for first, second, and third chromosome, and then whatever your cross is, right? You can do that as well. Um, it's up to you. I think either one's fine, because I keep seeing that question asked over and over. What do we do? What do we do about the figures? All right, Cynthia, you're gonna have to specify just a little bit longer, and or just a little bit more on that one. And Michelle says, for the chromosomal diagram, do we include sperm and egg gametes? No, no, no. You don't need that. So we don't know. If Casey wants the chromosomal diagram. Okay, well then, if that's what Casey wants, then that's what you're gonna get, Casey. Yeah. So. Uh, Basic biological process, what it's Tuan, Tuan Lee asks, what do you mean by basic biological? Basic biological, biological processes? All right, so your gene does something in the fly, right? right? For, I don't know, maybe your gene's an ABC, ABC transporter, maybe it plays a role in the extra layer matrix of uh, the organism cells, all right? Whatever it does, tell us about what it does, all right? And then tell us about what happens when you mutate it, right? Where along the line does that protein pathway get interrupted? Is it no longer able to transport whatever it needs to transport. Is it no longer able to bind to its ligand and create a response, right? Tell us where along the line it gets uh, messed up when you have a mutant gene, right? And then um, also on the rubric, you have to write about two related genes. So those genes, when it, what we mean by related is two genes likely related by the protein pathway, right? So if you have an ABC transporter, 
there are other proteins in that ABC transporter pathway that, that your protein interacts with, right? So tell us about those genes that make those proteins. So okay. just to clarify, what Micah has said is perfectly 100% correct, but just keep in mind what we talked about in lectures about the central dogma of biology, that you have a gene, right, RNA, uh, DNA, RNA, and protein. So your mutation produces a protein that's either you know, hypomorph, doesn't work quite well, or something. It's a mutant of some sort, but it's going to interact in some sort of pathway. So what Micah is saying is you need to describe at least a couple of other genes that are interacting with the product of your gene. That makes sense. Okay, so I think we missed something up here. Yeah, well, they're flying by. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> we were not able to finish all the crosses. Do we discuss, discuss what expected results were to have been given? What are we doing? Sure. So, Nikita, yes, you can discuss what the expected results could have been um, or would have been. And sure, so yeah, that, that was yeah. one of the things we talked about, of course. You're supposed to know what to expect from a cross. Right? Mm -hmm. long before you're scoring anything. So you should have an idea of what it would have been um, had you been able to score the, the progeny. Um, if it's something like DBM2 and say you have a sex link gene, then it's really not that relevant, but you still should describe why you did the cross. Uh, WA2 is irrelevant. Aziz, hey, boy. WA2 is a good practice for you guys because it gets you ready to well, for your exam, right? Um, there is a big portion of genetics that goes with mapping genes, and WA2 is what we give you to hopefully help you learn how to map genes. Um, so, yeah, you do need to understand the concepts behind what you're doing yes. uh, because you're going to be tested on. It's not just about kind of getting through. So if you have questions, we're here to – not necessarily right now, but throughout the rest of the semester via email or whatever other uh, – live streams or lectures we have online. I'm sorry, the, the questions are going by pretty fast, so we'll try to address them or repeat them if you really want an answer. So um, the, somebody mentioned Flybase. I tested Flybase outside of the university's network and it works. You'll get you'll get a big giant message that says, hey, you need to pay, but you, it'll work. The search features work. You can type in your gene. It'll give you the information about your gene and BLAST works as well. So you should be able to use Flybase outside of the university okay. network. Tashfia, I just want to address this real quick. We do not ever hand draw anything in this class. Ever, ever, ever. I don't care if you are Picasso, all right? Go on PowerPoint and just make a couple rectangles if you really can't give me a creative, nice diagram, all right? At least a couple rectangles. Um, for the Chrome, uh, anything else? Oh, I meant about oh, no, I meant about WA3 draft, if she can review it. Okay, so Zara, about your WA3 draft, if she can review. Um, for my students, you can send me anything, and I'll give you comments. I'm obviously not going to give you a grade. I'm not going to tell you exactly what to do to fix it, but I'm going to guide you on the process of hopefully getting that 100 or the A, you know? So you have to be reasonable as well because it's not, we, we can't preview uh, hundreds of papers and then grade right. them again. So send, you're right, you're right. Send, send. Okay, each of those, I say that for my students because I've done yeah. that throughout the entire sure. semester, right? But if your TA has not mentioned anything about that, it's not an option for you. Well, you can ask. You can ask, yeah. So the, I, one suggestion and I think a happy compromise is if you have a particular part of the paper that you're really struggling with, maybe focus on that. You can't just send a 15-page paper and say, give me feedback. That's just yeah. not going to work. Um, let's see. Is it difficult to ask questions over email for our papers? Marcelo, is it difficult to ask questions over email? No. No, it's not difficult to ask questions. Um, the way I normally grade papers that are sent to me is if you send me a paper that needs a lot of work, I'm going to give you very few comments, okay? Because I'm going to tell you, hey, this whole thing needs a lot of work. There's not much I can do here, All right? But if you send me a well-written paper that you've already worked on a lot, then I can go in deeper and say, hey, you can improve this. You can improve that. Maybe you can improve, improve the workflow here. Your science isn't really right here. I can do a lot more, right? So um, there was one question. Oh, I lost it. Um, yes, sir. Always. I can take over. 
Um, so I'm trying to catch up on some of the questions here. There was one good question I, I've lost it, so keep asking. Sure, sure. Um, so this is Valeria says, could we possibly have an example of the chromosomal diagram? Uh, sure. Uh, why don't you, Valeria, why don't you email me? You have my email and I'll post one on Blackboard for everybody. Uh, let's see, Casey Waiters. <laughs> hey, I know her. Uh, okay. Uh, so, um, okay, so Nikita asked for intricate processes of protein pathways. How do we avoid plagiarism? So, um, so you may be tagged if you're using common words, but you should paraphrase things in your own words such that it isn't, you're, you're not ever going to be able to completely avoid getting tagged in uh, Turnitin. I'll be right back. Sure, no problem. But you need to keep that number under 20%, preferably under 15%. So just paraphrase because you're going to be using common words, right? Um, so let's see, can we cite lab? No, no. If you look at the lab manuals right in the front, it says do not cite the lab manuals. Do not do that. They are not a source for the paper. Yeah, so we can't. Uh, so I'm, I'm, look, I'm working from the bottom of the list here. So I'm sorry because there's a lot of questions. Up. So repeat the question if you want it really answered. I can't post good WA3 papers because then, as I explained in lecture, what ends up happening, everybody's paper looks exactly like the example I post. Right. Sorry. All right. Let's see if I. Blah, blah, blah. So if you can't find something in Flybase, try the NCBI website and do searches um, of papers that way. Right? You don't have to just rely on Flybase. There are other sources. We only do chi-square. Uh, so WTM doesn't really... So Tin Gwen is asking for WTM crosses, we only do chi-square on... Yeah, so yeah, for WTM, you're not going to do a chi-square. Right? There's nothing to do a chi-square on them. So yeah, I think WTM2 may, I, I believe it does. Uh, I'm going to start working my way up. I see. Let's go by. So uh, Talid asks, just to clarify, if our mutation turned out to be ebony, which is uh, a body color mutation, we need to use ebony. Well, so you would use, I. so I don't know, I, uh, Mike had just left, but I would recommend that you use the actual gene name as it is presented in Flybase. So it'd be like something like E1, like with superscript one or something like that. Uh, you could use the word ebony, make sure that it is the nomenclature is proper, right? So that you're italicizing, you're not capitalizing, those kind of things. Hey, we got the goods. All right. Uh, let's see, uh, five bases the only one. Um, so can you address this one? Five base only has orthologs, not homologs. I, why wouldn't it have for our black genes? So can we use orthologs? okay? So yeah. to address that question, go back to PowerPoint three, go to slide like 40 something, and somewhere around there, it's just a white slide, and it tells you the difference between homologs, orthologs, and paralogs. Right? So go back and that will answer the question for you. Let's see. And we also have examples of good WA3 papers. I already did this. Okay. For W2M crosses, we only do Kesper and W2M2? Right. You, there's did no, you address there's that no, one? Yeah, I already did. Oh, okay. okay. Um, Which one have you not addressed? I'm working my way back up. Uh, oh, bonus points this semester for the reading assignments. Oh, so I'm still working on that. The reading assignments. Um, I, I don't know yet. So definitely the cross, the, the, the crosses that are bonus points are not going to happen. Uh, if I can, I'll put those online and figure out a way you guys can uh, fill out the, uh, the questionnaire. It shouldn't be that hard. A, a tentative yes to that question. I'll, I'll post the reading assignments. You'll read them. You will fill out the, fill out the questions and then submit them. And I, it should work. So yeah, I think that that'll work. Okay. So Tashfia says, so which crosses do we need a chi-square on? 
Which Micah? process do we need to cut through? Maybe like DBM1, DBM2. DBM1, DBM2, WTM2, and that's it. You only should be giving us three chi-squares. Also, if your chi-squares are incorrect, that is not good. Make sure that you check your chi-squared values. Check to make sure that you are doing the math correctly. If you get a bad chi-squared value, that's okay. It is okay to get a chi-squared value that you have to reject the null hypothesis with because you need to tell us why. Right? Why did you get that bad chi-squared value? Is it because you haven't counted enough progeny? Is it because something happened with your flies? Are your flies dying for some reason? Tell us. Okay? So this one, Hamza, says, where do you find homologs, gene, homologs in humans from fly gene? Uh, from the fly gene? Um, is that like you can oh. find those in fly base? Okay. Okay. But so this, honestly... Uh, You don't need this for WA3. Well, no, but he may already be thinking about WA5. Okay. okay, if you're thinking about WA5, what you can do is on Flybase, you can find the sequence of your gene. Okay, it'll give you gene sequence. You take that FASTA file and put it right in the blast, and you'll be able to get the human homologs. For those, yeah, what I, what I just said blew some people's minds yeah, right there. We haven't covered that. Okay, we haven't covered that. That will be covered in a later, at a later date, right? I will probably cover that. I really love that lesson. Great. I love the yeah, entire sure. molecular biology right. thing. Right? So, well, unfortunately, so um, there are gonna be some things that you're just not gonna be able to do for WA3, because we haven't covered that yet. We would have been covering it this week, but as you can see, we're not, we're not in session trying to figure out how to move everything online. So don't worry about that just now. Just do the best you can for WA3. Um, we still, like I said in our in my announcements, we still expect you guys to do your very best, but we understand there are some things you're just not going to be able to do. What about a chi-squared on wild-type cross? You can do a chi-squared on wild-type cross. Um, oh, the control. Yeah, 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 the control. yeah, yeah that, that should yeah. have a chi-squared. Yeah, right. So, right. right, that one has a chi-squared as well. Thank you, Tashvia. There we go. Tashvia's on the ball. Oh, and it looks like Zara Malik. Um, answered Casey Waiter's question. Anybody in Casey Waiter's class will not, she will not be able to review the entire rough draft, but if there, if there is a particular question, yeah. you are welcome to email me. Right, right. So that, I think that's a, a, a general rule of thumb is to not send your TA your entire paper, but maybe a small section, a couple of paragraphs that you're struggling with, with clear questions that they can quickly address. Because you can see, is Micah right here is they're very busy doing their other job, which is research. <laughs> All right. Uh, Shada Mashini asked if you need a chi squared on WTM2. Yes. Charles told us to have it in WA3. What did Charles tell us to have? Yeah, that's not clear enough. But this is from Hamza. Oh, I think she asked about the homologs, the human homologs. Ah, okay. So if he asked you to have it in WA3, go ahead and look for, for it in WA3. All right. Also, you can ask him to, for help. I mean, yeah. if he's saying, look, you need to have this in your paper, then you can say, hey, Charles, how do I do it? Yeah. Right. Um, let's see. I'll just email Charles. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, so Aziz, yeah, that is your expected ratio, one to one to one to one for, yes. for WTC. Uh, let's see. So there's no chi squared for W. So we just addressed that. There yes. should be. You one. can, you will do a chi squared for WTC, wild type control or wild type cross control. Okay. And so um, the paper, I think, is um, 15 pages? Yeah, 15 right? pages, honestly. I, I don't have a rubric. In both of I mean, he's still working, and I just finished working, so I didn't bring the rubric with me. Um, is that good on you? Huh? Is that good on you? <laughs> no, no, no. no. All right, I'm going to wash my uh, arm off real quick. This is actually human blood. <laughs> uh, so we're getting splattered. <laughs> no, no. Okay, so uh, let's see. Uh, sorry. Uh, so there's no password for it. So Andrea, yeah, there is. You, it is. You're expected as a one to one to one to one, and you you can then calculate your chi square with your observed, right? What you guys scored. So Jeannie says, how many pages? Like you said, 15. And somebody asked earlier. The figures are towards the end, and you can fit as many as those as you can in a page. It doesn't have to be one per page, but maybe you can do two per page. But they're at the end after your references.
So Valerie Valeria says we don't have a good chi squared. I don't know what for our DVMP yeah. cross, but right. our gene is located on chromosome one. How we will be penalized for this since this cross for us was just a way to double check DVM one. Okay, well, well, DVM two does not double check DVM right. one in yeah. any way. She 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 means w, uh, WTM one and WTM two. She should get similar because it's sex yeah. linked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. Um, so, but our gene is located on chromosome one. All right. So if your well, if your chi squared value is off, then tell us why. Yeah. All right. Most likely for all of you guys in the chat right now, it's because you didn't score enough flies. Okay. If you look at any of these papers who do, have done chi squared analyses on their crosses, they scored thousands of flies. All right. So those of you who have scored 50 to 100 flies are probably not going to get an equal distribution. Right. So yes, we've an we've answered this a couple times already. You should do a chi squared, a very easy chi squared for WTC. Uh, next, time, control. next time we'll have like a little whiteboard behind <laughs> us, that whiteboard, so we have questions that just keep on coming up. So you may have figured out a lot of us are trying to figure out how we're going to be doing this on a regular basis. Yeah. And so this I is mean, it for right now. Yeah. I mean, I just sit here in this lab all day, so I love having people to talk to. Okay. Yeah, especially since now all my lab mates are gone. It's just me, guys. <laughs> well, I guess I don't count. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> you're, you're like, you're, you're more than a lab mate. <laughs> just kidding. Okay, let's keep looking at it. What should we expect for high squared for WTM cross? What should you, oh, what would your expected values be? Okay, so if you scored 200 flies, you would expect that a hundred, and you, okay, sorry. If you scored 200 flies um, and you counted like, I don't know, 100 females and 100 males, right? you would expect 100 females and 100, no, no, no. You would just expect all your females to be one, all your males to be the other. Well, I mean, it also yeah. depends on where your gene is. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. That's, <laughs> so, yeah. So this is some of the things that, so, Somebody was griping about fly gene earlier. And this is what fly gene helps you understand because you're re you're doing these crosses, these simulations in fly gene, right? So if you have sort of a question, you can go back to the cross in fly gene that is exactly the same as what you were doing in the lab to try to understand the chi-square. Uh, for the materials and methods, Manesh asks, do we have to mention where our stock is from? Carolina Biologicals is the only place you need to really tell me if you, yeah. You good with that? Yeah, that's fine. I mean, uh, your double balancers, uh, wall type are all Carolina biological. The mutants, so for the mutants, what you can do is if you type it into Flybase, it'll tell you where it's from. You just click on it and it'll, it'll say stocks. You click on the stock link and it'll take you where it's from. Often they're from different places. You can get the same mutant from different places. Just pick one. Usually we get them from Bloomington. So you can, if it's not Carolina, it's gonna be Bloomington. That's easy enough, right? I hope they're listening. Oh, yeah, hopefully. For chi squared calculations for expected value, should that be a whole number or a decimal value if applicable? A whole number. You cannot have 0.5 of a fly. If you had 0.5 of a human, would a human be alive or dead? For materials and methods, where in the lab manual can I find some of the information? So the information is, is, for example, the food recipe is in the lab manual. It's in the, uh, in the techniques manual, I think, the first one. Um, the other things are things you did that you personally did in the lab, so you should know firsthand what those methods are, right? Does that help? If we don't have data for some of the crosses, how do we address that in the results section? So Okay, I, so go ahead. what I've been telling people is that give me a solid, scientific background for that cross, a scientific reasoning section for that cross, okay? If you have no data at all for a cross, give me a solid scientific reasoning, and then give me some expected results. All right, so tell me what you would expect from that cross. If you, actually, you all know your genes, right? So you should all be able to figure out what your expected results would have been. Okay, let me address this. Ten, Ten Gwen says uh, is asking about the interaction crosses. We did not do interaction crosses, so you don't you're not responsible for that. That's something I covered in lecture. Uh, even though it's in the rubric, I crossed it out I, I, in class, right? So you do, you're not responsible for anything to do with interaction crosses. 
if expected value is a whole number, what is the total value of observed and expected? What? No. I'm not sure what you're asking, Michelle. Yeah. If expected value is a whole number, what if the total value of observed and expected are not the same? Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, you, it doesn't you, you, matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Don't worry about it. Okay? Basically, like, she told us up the observed, she told us up the expected, because you took the decimals off, you're not going to have the same number. Okay. All right. So, you know, Shelly, Shelly F says, sorry, like the equipment and branch. No, you don't, you don't have to, again, and I, I don't mean to be repetitive, but this was discussed in lecture. You don't have to name the brands of the microscopes or the pipetters you would have used or just, in fact, you don't, we don't, in the methods, we don't describe that kind of, to that level of detail. Simply the stocks that you use, where they're from, right? Any important reagents, um, like the food, right? How did fly husbandry? So how did you handle the flies? How did you make your crosses? Um, the conditions in, in which they were housed? Those, those yeah. Type of things. The, in literature, the only time when listing the equipment would be important is if you use a special piece of equipment for some kind of method that you did. Like I read a paper today and it was dealing with ultra centrifugation and they told us about the different rotors they use through each step because that matters. Each rotor is going to have a different angle, going to have different slides, sizes. Um, and so for, for your work you did, it's pretty standard. You don't have to worry about, you know, you can say, for example, that you anesthetize, you anesthetize the flies using CO2 and that's it. You don't have to do anything, say anything. We cannot reach 15 pages with the amount of data we have. What do we do? Just do. So <laughs> if you can't, you can't. I mean, there's yeah. so, I mean, it's not going to be five pages, right? So, because you're not, all right. All right, so say you can get to 10 or 12. That's that's the best you can. And it's a good, well written paper that tells us the story of, of your mutant. That's fine. Right? If you really, really, really want to get to that 15 pages because you feel like your TA is going to take off for it. Um, because obviously we're two people, we can't speak for all the TAs, uh, then you can expand on your discussion section and you can expand on your introduction section. Right? Because most likely you didn't go deep enough on the introduction and most likely you did not cover everything in the discussion. So those are the first two sections. If you are at nine pages that you should go back and look at. So you can't make up results and you can't just pad your methods. Yep. So what he's saying is the introduction and discussion are places where you can uh, practically add a little bit more weight to your paper. But is there any specific areas that you think that they may need to expand on, like the background of your gene or? So the background of your, of your gene should basically be, what's my gene? When was it discovered? Who discovered it? If you have a single person who discovered it, um, and then tell me all about the biological process of it. So when we talked about what biological processes are like signaling pathways or biochemical pathways that your gene is involved in, please do whatever you do, don't go into this long dissertation about Thomas Hunt Morgan and what yes. he did. That's not going to help your paper at all. And in the discussion, you can do the same thing in the sense that you can expand on the biological processes of your, of your gene and what it may mean within the context of, of the work that you've been doing. And then before you turn in the paper, you should probably go back to your materials and methods section and make sure that you're not overstating anything, right? So if you talk more than one sentence about how to anesthetize your flies, you have spoken too much about how to anesthetize your flies. Right. Um, we don't need to know that much about it. Uh, earlier you referred to an alternative to the chromosomal diagram. Oh, oh so um, do you have that? Yeah. Sorry. Oh, good, oh, good. Sandwich? Yeah. No. Uh, okay. Okay, so I'm, uh, so, sorry, we're very, very low tech other than the computer right now. So if you did, I'm going to write it down here. So for example, um, and I'm just going to keep it simple by, and I'll, I'm going to show this, so bear with me. Uh, Stuff, right like this right so this is just a uh, well, this is a white mutant right and I'm crossing it into a double balance yeah so I'm, I'm homozygosing these wild type of yeah. basically so this is another way you can do it this is the standard format that's used in the literature now if you want to use the, the chromosome 
diagrams. That's cool too. But I like the pictures. Okay, Michael likes the pictures. <laughs> so you would you can do it like this, but if you're gonna do it like this, you have to make sure you know what you're doing. This is uh, chromosome one, two, three separated by a semicolon, and you need to know how to do that. For example, here, right? So so two chromosomes, right? So here's curly, here's a plum, dyke eats double, right? So that's how we would write up the the, the alleles or genes in, in whatever it is you're trying to do. I hope that helps. And, and by the way, you can you can find this nomenclature in all of the papers I made available to you guys in Blackboard, right? There's a folder that has tons of Drosophila papers for you to become familiar um, as to how people write about Drosophila, and you'll find this kind of nomenclature in there. Sure, yes. Uh, so I'm going to address Vinesh's question. Can we submit more than once to check? Similarity, yes, you can. I think uh, I think Blackboard or Turnitin will let you do it three times, and then you have to wait 24 hours before it lets you do it again. Now, it, that doesn't mean you can't keep submitting in terms of like if you're if you want to submit your paper, but it won't give you an updated uh, similarity score. Yep. And for Aziz, yes, this live stream will be up after it's over. I've been thinking about ways to like add hyperlinks to certain questions, but honestly, we're going through questions so quickly that it's probably not very practical. Well, I mean, we're doing, we're getting tons of questions doing the best to. Yeah, yeah. Uh, can we submit more? Has WA2 been graded? WA2 has been graded for some of you that I have graded, and the rest of you are just going to have to wait because I'm literally going in alphabetical order. So if your last name starts with a Z, thanks. Right. But um, it, it'll be graded. Just bear yeah. with us. Um, Give us some time because we're having some uh, technical issues, issues on every front. Um. <laughs> I thought the experiment, experiment was to determine the unknown gene we have, but we already confirmed the gene we have in the introduction of our paper. Okay, so you write about the gene in the introduction, but you don't tell us that you actually have a gene. So for instance, what I've told my students is your introduction should go through everything, right? In the very end of that introduction, you should have a statement that says, uh, we have identified an unknown mutant and using Mendelian genetics, molecular genetics, and bioinformatics, we're going to identify that mutant, um, identify the uh, chromosomal inheritance pattern, identify the location of the gene, and identify what chromosome it's on. And then you give us a very, very brief, very brief results statement. Okay, not a whole results paragraph. Give me a very brief results statement. Tell me the big things that you figured out, right? My gene is on chromosome one. It, uh, we use, Chromosome one, it is autosomal. It is. Um, it's on one sex one. Oh, whoops. That's okay. Yeah, Keep yeah. going. Okay, so my gene is on chromosome one. It is sex linked. It is um, complementary to whatever yeah. gene it complements. And that's it for now. Yeah. That's fine. For WA3, that's it. Okay, sorry. So while we're chatting, we have any questions keep going by. So oh, wow. Yeah. Times right, so Samuel Ramos asks a good question. I think uh, so. If I could speak on it, he says, I thought the experiment was to determine the unknown. Oh, gene. no, that's what we just did. Is it, you just did? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay, well, never mind then. So, hey, Samuel. Sorry. What if we I'm, didn't get to do both of our complementation crosses and we need to do chi squares? You do not need no. to do chi squares so, for any of the complementation right. crosses. Complementation but, crosses are only you look at your flies and see if they complement or don't yeah. complement. But let's, let's understand why we don't have to do the chi squares. Chi-square tells you that your results deviated from an expected. If you don't know what your expected is, then you don't need to do a chi-square, right? In the complementation cross, we don't know what the expected is. We don't know if we're going to be a wild type or if we're going to be a mutant, right? We don't know. So we aren't going to do chi-square for that. How can we find the names of the complementation genes? Uh, it's on Blackboard. It yeah, it should be on Blackboard it's if your TA has not emailed you already. Um, I believe I posted that this morning on Blackboard. Uh, it's in the wa 3 folder. There are two new PDFs with lots of information about the mutants and uh, used this semester plus their complements. Let's see. So Shelly F says for the biological processes, how detailed should we go? Oh, how detailed? Uh, Honestly. 
I would go down to the point where you're giving me enzyme names, enzyme products, and that's it. You don't really need to tell me all the uh, biophysics behind yeah, every little interaction, right? right. right? right. Yeah. But if you can tell me the enzymes in the um, or the proteins in the pathway, the different right. products they produce, you covered your gene, you covered the two related genes, and you're good, right? Um, for your mutation or telling us what happens when you mutate that gene. You don't really need to go way in depth. You just say if this gene is mutated in a certain way, then it produces this result phenotypically because of the inhib inhibition of the protein ligand interaction because of mutation. Yeah, that was just an example. It doesn't mean everybody yeah. has a ligand interaction. Yeah. All right. Uh, yes, uh, Valeria says, can we reuse the figure from WAL1? Sure. I mean, you. The, the, the answer to your question is sure. You can reuse some of the figures from WAL1 to WA 3 Just make sure that they fall within the rubric of WA 3 that any errors, anything that your TA noticed in WAL1 when grading it are not repeated in mm. WAL3. So another thing that is not discussed but should be discussed, for your chi-square tables, don't give me all the little cells, okay? When you look at a professional paper, you see just straight lines, right? You don't see a whole bunch of little blocks all over the place. So whenever you make your table in Excel, you can choose which lines you want to put in, right? So your table should probably look something like this. All right, three lines, three simple lines. You've got some totals down here, wherever you want. You've got your numbers here, column here, column here, column here, column here, right? It's a simple table. It's not messy. There's not a whole bunch of different lines going all over the place. It's nice and neat, all right? Um, it doesn't have to be like this exactly, but just don't give us the grids, all right? Don't give us the grids. Uh, do you suggest that we start the paper from the results section? Oh, everybody's different in how yeah. they do that. Yeah. Uh, the, the results section is a good place to start because now you know what you have to work with, and then you can expand yes. from there. Uh, methods is easy, another easy section that you can fill in and feel good, like, oh, look, I have half my paper done or part of my paper done. You know, one way that I've found is helpful is starting from the figures. Yeah. yeah. Right. So if you get your figures down, you put your figure legends down, you expand off your figure legends and the results. The results lead to discussion, and all of that is going to fill up your method section and then your introduction, you're going to figure out what you need to tell us at the beginning to get us ready to read the rest of the paper. Let's see, uh, do we only need photos? Um, I think I've done this like seven times. I should be good. <laughs> you mean you're... Yeah. <laughs> so uh, Ryan says, do we need only photos on our complementation crosses or do we need photos? So no, for DBM crosses, all you need is your results which um, what, what, what were the, the results of your DBM crosses at chi-square information. So we covered this earlier, well, Micah did. So uh, in terms of figures, you're gonna need figures, uh, photographs of your mutant and your wild type, which is something you should have done for a while one. What else? Uh, there, if, you, if you didn't get to the complementation crosses in terms of getting photographs, then describe them, describe the results, describe what the phenotypes are. Don't describe it in a figure though. Describe it in the right. results section. Right. Don't give us a figure with words. Right, right. So yeah, that. thank you for clarifying. So if you're going to describe it, do it in the text, right? If you couldn't get to a figure, because as of today, uh, you can no longer access the fly lab. Um, so you may not be able to get the photographs anymore. Yes, the order of the figures does matter. So in the sense, so if, if you would, I mean, obviously you're starting with figure one to figure six or whatever, and so in, in the figure section, they have to be in that same order. Uh, let's see, I'm still a bit confused on the figures being at the end of the paper, the chromosomal diagram should be included in the results. So everything goes at the end of the paper. So your chromosomal chart, um, uh, chi-squared tables, uh, photographs, whatever, they all go at the end. So if you can just imagine, you know, you have your introduction, uh, your methods, your results, your discussion, your references, and then after that starts figure one, figure so, two, figure three. I believe the logic behind that was when Vida was creating this assignment, 
he wanted you to submit this document as if you were submitting to a journal. And when you submit to many journals, they make you put all your text first, then literature cited, and then the figures. So I think that was, that is the reason. Right? Um, does the order? Oh, did you already answer that? Yeah, did. Okay. So I think then, we've covered a lot of these. If, if we haven't uh, covered your question, you can repeat it. Mm -hmm. Um, let's see, so we, we can organize. Uh, yes, you can yeah. organize them like that, and actually it would be helpful if you did. So that you have all the figures for DBM1, all the figures for DBM2, all the figures for Wild Type Cross. Um, it's nice to look at, it's also very easy to grade. The easier your paper is to grade, the better your, the grade. Better your grade, most likely. Why? Because it's very, very easy to find the things that you want us to find. Okay? Um, I'm not saying that if your paper is a complete mess that you'll get a worse grade. It just makes it, just, it more difficult. Yeah, it just makes it difficult to give you a good grade. Okay? So Zara is asking again about the uh, other genes that we're going to ask them to describe. Right. And you... Related genes are anything other than where the mutation happened, right? For example, if mutation happened in the white gene, white cannot be a related gene, right? So white is actually related to two genes, right? So scarlet, and it also plays a role with cinnabar, I believe. Yeah, scarlet and cinnabar, right? So you would write about scarlet and cinnabar in your paper, all right? So tell me how those two genes interact with white. Tell me what they do in the process. And then maybe if you want to give me some extra information on them, you can. And I just, as a waiver here, is that that was an example. If we're wrong, you're still responsible for doing it. You can't say Micah told me on YouTube. <laughs> it's Cinnabar, so. Oh, yeah. yeah. Actually, I know it's Scarlet, yeah, but yeah. Cinnabar, yeah, I think it's, it's like, no, oh, it's, it's like cinnamon or something. Cinna, cinna something. Okay. <laughs> I don't remember right now. Do we need a title for, ah, wait, wait, what, do, we, do we need a title for WA3 or just start with section titles? So this is important. Um, I would highly encourage all of you to write a title for WA3, even though it's not a, on a rubric. Why? Because your TA will look at the title and if they see an issue with it, they'll tell you the issue. Okay. Right. So it, it's like a practice for WAP5. Exactly. Practice for WAP5. And then also going on to the second part of that question, the subsections, right? So you should have introduction. Give me the entire introduction. Materials and methods, break that puppy up into subsections. All right. There is so much in materials and methods that if you do not break it up into subsections, you're going to get confused. We're going to get confused. Your entire paper is going to read like a mess. Mm -hmm. um, so make sure that put everything into subsections so you know exactly what's in your paper, where it is, and you can go and edit it if you need to. You can do an outline of your paper as well, right? Mm -hmm. So you can do an outline that has sections, subsections, and then fill in the... Yeah, and it doesn't have to stop at subsections. You right. can do sub-subsections, right? So for me, if I wanted to do my uh, top section bold, right? So the big section in bold, and then maybe subsections underlined, and then maybe sub-subsections italicized. That's one way to do it. But you need to make sure that you keep that format throughout the entire paper. Because if you switch things around, it's going to get real confusing. So Heather asks, are we able to use the same table formatting from WA2 to WA3? Well, it, no. it's not going to really translate. So oh, wait, well, wait, wait, wait. Well, I mean, are you talking like... Okay, format? so this right here. See this? This is your table. Okay, you give me three lines. This is the most simple table you could possibly give me, right? For WA2, it wanted to give you, it wanted me to give right. you all of that calculation right. stuff. All you need to do is tell me the uh, class number, the phenotype, the observed, the expected, and the chi-squared value. All right? Boom. That's it. Okay? Nice so and simple. I'll, I'll, I you don't I'll, need to go through all the math. I'll put up, a, I think, some examples, some good examples of the yeah. tables for... Uh, Okay, so Jasmine, we've, I, I don't mean to, we've answered that several times. Uh, how do we figure out which gene are related? Oh, scarlet and brown? Yeah, that sounds right. Hey, Scar there we go, <laughs> okay. So it's definitely not cinnabar. So Jasmine, um, so as Micah 
explained earlier, it could be um, genes or gene products that your gene interacts with, right? So there's got to be a, a pathway. Um, it's a signaling pathway or some sort of pathway in which several proteins are part of that pathway, and you could pick one of those or two of those. But that requires that you understand what your gene does. Right? That's the reason that we're asking you to do that. Okay, actually, Imran Siddiqui. Did I teach you anatomy and physiology? For that, that's one. Right? Two, are there dis any discrepancies between the rubric on the writing assignment manual and what you actually want from the paper? I wouldn't call no. them discrepancies. No, they're not discrepancies. However, there are expansions, yeah, right? Yeah. So when we say something, we want to expand it upon, right? Give us, give us something good. So, I mean, it, it, we can't possibly write a rubric that will cover every possible situation for these papers. So it's a general guideline. And then that's why we asked you to talk to your TAs about what, what they expect. And then that's what this live stream is for, is try to address some of these issues. Right, and again, the reason I put those papers on Blackboard for you to read to get an idea how these type of reports are, are, are written. Okay, Zara and Malik. So wait, wait, so all of the group members are gonna be using the same related genes? Maybe. Maybe, not but, necessarily. Yeah, yeah, so sometimes you have multiple related right. genes. Right, no, so bio, biochemical pathways can be very complex and you can choose different genes that might be involved somehow in, in some sort of interaction with your gene, right? But no, not necessarily. That doesn't mean that you wouldn't, but you don't have to. I'm running out of liquid nitrogen. Okay, well, I don't think we've addressed pretty much. Yeah, I mean, I'll stay here and just no, chill with no, I'm a while. I got time. I got sandwiches too. You want a sandwich? <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, yeah, you can grab a sandwich. What is, it, what, what is it? Like you having a party? Oh uh, no, my dad uh, works in North Houston. Sometimes he drops off some food. Ah. Yeah. Can you post good examples of papers? We're working on that. So, Maybe. Yeah. I'll, I what I'll do is I'll probably post some uh, parts because I can't post the whole paper. As I said earlier, then everybody's paper is going to look exactly. Like um, when is the exam and how will it be done online? So, um, I don't even know why. We can address that at another time. Yeah. It, it will be probably delivered through Blackboard. Um, uh, probably around the time when it was scheduled on the syllabus. There will be an updated syllabus posted by next week. Yeah. Uh, so, it will give you an idea how the schedule has changed. Also, there will probably be some kind of stream to address what you need to study right. for. Although the umbrella term is study everything. Also, just a small portion of a good paper. So I'm going to address Michelle Long. She says, due to the UH shutdown, will the molecular portion of the lab just not happen? Oh. In, in a way, yes. But here's what we're going to do. And again, I put this in the announcements that I sent out over the last week, is that we will provide you with the data for your particular gene. So, for example, we will give you a picture of the gel that has all of the information here, your mutant, your complement, your wild type, whatever you need to, to write about. So, you still need to know what a gel is and how a gel is produced. What is electrophoresis? What is a PCR? How do you do DNA extraction? All of that is still fair game. and All that information is on Blackboard. When are we doing the chromosomal figures and chi-score tests for all the crosses? This paper, hopefully. So you're, you're writing all that in this paper? Yeah. Uh, do we label WTM2 or WTC before the figures? Um, or no? I'm not sure what yeah, you mean there, Delete. No. I'm sorry. Marcelo says, so we aren't explaining mutations in those related genes, just how those genes relate to our gene? You may. You can. And actually, I would say that you should. Because the more detailed of an introduction you give and the fewer words in the less amount of words. Um, more information, less words, good grade. Okay. So we aren't explaining What about our future quizzes? Ah, oh, Tashfia. What about our future quizzes? Yeah, that's again, that. like, like, like the exam, We, I will address that. You'll, you'll get an announcement. Yeah. You should. So one thing, if, you, if you're not using your UH email, this is the time to make sure your UH email goes somewhere because when I send out announcements, it goes to the UH email. 
So what I'm seeing here is individuals who have not received my announcements, because I've covered all of this in announcements. And by announcements, I mean Blackboard announcements. Uh, oh, wait, like section labels? Oh, to lead. So if you're talking about the if you're talking about the figures section, the section labels for those figure sections, yes, you should tell me what table you have, right? Actually, 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 it should be in the figure legend itself, right? So you should have figure one, title in bold, and then the rest of the figure legend. Figure two, figure three, table one, table two, right? Are we able to go pick up our locks and notebooks? Yes, you are. You are able to go pick up your locks and notebooks. We okay. are not allowed to tell you to go pick them up. Right. So you, if you're going to pick up your lab notebooks, you need to do it as soon as possible. And please... I'm going to take an opportunity to remind everyone to unlock your lockers so that we can remove the materials that are in there, take your locks with you, um, or send us the lock combination so we can do that. We need to remove those locks. So if you're going to get your lab book, do it as soon as possible because we don't know how long you may have access to the labs. molecular genetics part in our methods for WA3. No, no, no molecular have, no. genetics part in WA3 ever. But whatever molecular stuff we talk about in lectures, um, the information that we present to you, that is fair game for WA5 and also for quizzes and exams. Yep. Are we... I was looking forward to physically doing the molecular... Bro, I was looking forward to doing the molecular work in lab so much. In fact, I will fight somebody to do those presentations, because I really like those. Okay, you get to do them, it's Michelle, so it's not a bro. Oh, Michelle, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, Ashley said, yeah, me too. I feel that. Do we miss anything up here? I, I don't think so. No, I think we covered it. Okay. Oh, we have five likes. Oh, that's so nice. <laughs> I like those. All right. Looking for questions. Can you suggest how many pages should each section oh, be? That's uh, be? Different. Okay, so that's honestly a little bit different for each TA. Um, and for per each person. Yeah, each person, person as well. Uh, so some people are more ahead than other people in terms of data, right? For WA3, we've kind of frozen everybody where they are. Some people have their complementation process all the way done, DBM1, DBM2 out the window already completely done, right? Some of you guys are still struggling on DBM1, and that's okay. You are going to be fine. Um, so, in, in general terms of proportion, though, your results and discussion should probably be the, the meatier part of the paper. Uh, your materials and methods don't need to be doesn't need to be a few paragraphs. Two three paragraphs should be enough for the materials and methods, and your introduction should be about as maybe. What do you think, introduction? Um, okay, page, so introduction introduction is. On average, two pages. Yeah. Materials and methods. Page and a half is really right. all you need. Yeah. Like even that's kind of pushing that's, it. That's long. Um, results should be five pages at least, right? Results should be five pages. Even with a lot of people missing information, you should be able to reach that five-page goal. So everything is double spaced, one-inch margin. So you have lots of white space there to. to yep. And then discussion should be three to four pages. Um, and your figures should take up the rest. That doesn't mean to give us giant figures if you only right, have three pages of text. So it's not like one figure every day. You should be able to snugly put in two figures yeah. per page. Uh, can we start the paper? <laughs> uh, yes, you can start the paper. So it was, the paper was assigned three <laughs> weeks ago? The lock and notebook from my group 19 has been removed in case I needed to notify all. Oh, okay. thank you, Imran. Thank you. thank you. Oh, Aziz also thanks you. Thank you, Aziz. So if we have less than 200 projects for DM2, can we go ahead and do a chi-squared on it? Yeah. You can do a chi-squared on anything, all right? And when you get a bad chi-squared value, you need to explain it. So, I mean, it depends on what you mean by less than 200. If it's 150, oh, yeah. it'll probably work. Right, but yeah. the smaller your sample, the the less reliable your results. Mm -hmm. 
So can we use the same table format in WA2 for value table and catch squared in W? Somebody just uh, asked that. Somebody did that, just asked that. All okay, right, so Anna, um, you know, next time we yeah, we really, I had a whiteboard right there, but yeah. literally I tried to rip it off and I almost nah, picked the shelves. <laughs> um, so your tables, the most simple table that you can give me should have three lines. Two for the top to tell me what section, what column it is. One for the bottom, maybe put your totals down here in bold. Then you should have column, 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 right? This is the most simple, neatest table you can give me. Um, please do not give grids. I don't want to see any grids. Also, you should only give me the classes, the phenotype, the observed, the expected, and then the chi-squared value. And that's all you really need. That's all I need from it. Simple is better. Yep. Don't give me all of the math from last time. Are figure legends double space as well? Uh, oh, that's a good question. Okay. Um, sometimes oh, you don't know either? I don't I, know. So either. in, in um, I think they can be single spaced, but you yeah. can, so per this discussion for now, I think either way is fine. Single space or double space yeah. is fine. That's a great question. Uh, Mirza, I've actually wondered that for a long time. Um, ever since I started teaching, actually, because I've seen Vita say literally both things, mm -hmm. and all the TAs do it their own way. So, right. so you, either one's fine. Just keep be consistent. If you're gonna do one, be consistent for all the all the figures. You guys deserve a raise. Uh, just seeing your smiles and knowing that you're smiling behind the screen gives us the, the raise that we need. Oh shoot. <laughs> I'm going fishing. Hey, the sample's still in there. Woo! Okay, we're good. I almost lost like many hours of work right there. Liquid nitrogen is wonderful. Is it okay to have pictures in different angles and different pictures? If, if it still tells the story well, I mean, if you're trying to show your wing mutation, it doesn't matter really what the angle is as long as the wing mutation is, is visible. Wait, 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 wait. A, is it okay to have pictures in different angles for different figures? Um, I, I'm assuming she, they mean uh, fly pictures. Right? Yeah, so fly pictures, if you have them in one angle for one figure, then you need to keep them that angle for that figure. Oh, within the same figure, right? So yeah. within, this, uh, yeah, within the right, same right, figure, right. it has to be the exact same orientation. If you change the figure, you can flip flop it. That's okay. That's fine. We're not going to be that crazy about it, but in an actual paper, I would say that you probably want everything at the same angle. Well, I just want to let Michelle know that I'm also multitasking. She just can't see what I'm doing. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> see, he's multitasking as well. Yes, I'm multitasking in my head. Uh huh. Exactly. Uh, Michelle, you almost did. <laughs> um, let's see. What's happened? What's happened? Yeah, I think it's slowing down a little bit. We have 66 people. Yeah, I know. That's I think we had some people join because we went down to 64 for a bit. So, oh, we got 13 likes, too. That's a nice. We're already YouTube stars. That's right. Yeah. So, this will be posted for pos posterity, right? And, uh, well. Yeah, this will be posted for everybody to see, everybody to go over again. Um, I like doing this. And, honestly, I have... I'm pretty much here all day, and because I'm alone in this lab, I can yell and scream as loud as I want and talk to you guys as loud as I want. So uh, I'll probably be doing some more throughout the week to, actually, maybe not throughout the week, but next week, the week's coming, to let you guys know what's happening. So Ashley says, when labeling the figures, if we have bristle mutation, do we use arrows? Sure. sure. I mean, but, 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 do not ever use anything that obstructs data. Right. Okay, if your arrow completely covers the bristle. The bristle never existed, all right? So sure, I mean, you can, the, the leader lines, the arrows, just use them with some discretion to, as Mike has said, don't obliterate the target. But sure, you can use little round ends and little arrows, whatever you want. Let's see what's happening. So no, so Tashfia says, we were given one complementation name uh -huh. or two complementation. So, so. What was happening there was 
in nature, in real life, right? Um, the way that we want you guys to think about this is that you had a couple other mutants around the lab that you knew the identity of, right? And you crossed your mutant fly with those mutant flies, right? And based on that, you could say, okay, so our mutant is phenotypically similar to this mutant, and they ended up complementing and producing the wild type, okay? And then you went through a couple other stocks of flies and you figured out, okay, so my gene is this gene because this mutant has a mutation on this certain gene. And when I cross it with my mutant fly, I get a mutant, which means that both of them have a mutation on the same gene. No, no, no. Wait, wait, wait. Samuel so we no longer talk about candidate genes in our paper since we know our gene already? Okay. Well, yeah, so remember, oh, well, oh, one, oh. we asked him for candidate Okay, genes. so that is going to be a discussion, right? So you're going to go through your discussion, and in the discussion, you'll talk about your candidate genes, and if you got one right and just magically were able to predict your gene based on the phenotype, great, awesome, cool. But what you need to do is go through your process of elimination, right? So you did WT1, WT2 to tell you that you were autosomal or sex-linked, and that crossed off a couple of these genes from your list. And you did DBM1 and DBM2 to figure out if... Um, autosom uh, autosomal location. Yeah, yeah. Right? autosomal and uh, the chromosomal location, right? So if, it's on, if your candidate genes were on any other chromosome, then you automatically cross those off the list. Okay, and you should hopefully end up with like one gene or they all go across off the list right. and that's fine too. That's right. cool. So this also gives you something to write about, right? How you mm -hmm. went through yes. thinking about which what your gene was. Man, these masks are suffocating. <laughs> this one is actually quite comfortable. Oh, really? I think that means mine's working better. <laughs> you see, uh, I the mutations the same. I don't understand that. Two different mutations. You can have multiple mutations on the same gene. Yeah. Right? You can have multiple mutations on the same gene. Um, what it means by loci is that's just a, a region of a gene, a, yeah. a region, right? So that region can get larger and can get smaller depending on what you're referring to. Right. Um, so that's a little bit of an arbitrary question, but exactly. yes, you can have two multiple. That's why I was wondering what they meant by it. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, Samuel Ramos, you talked about at least two. Oh, thank you, Aziz. Yes, you do talk about at least two candidate genes. Uh, so Ashley's asking about labeling again. So here's where looking at some of the literature helps, because you can see how other people have done this in labeling parts of the fly. Also, if you look at the Atlas of Fly Morphology, there's lots of things labeled there. So that might help you figure out how to label things. Because we literally can't tell you exactly how to do it. But Micah's suggestion, whatever you do, don't obliterate what it is you're pointing to. Is it OK if one of our related genes is the same as a complementary gene? Is it OK? Uh, I would. I mean, is this something that, that you just by chance happen to be the same as a complement? Is that, is that what he said? Yeah. Um, so oftentimes your complement gene is not going to be related. Yeah, it'll, it could. Well, no, because if it complements, it's, it's, it's a different gene. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a different, different gene. gene. So technically, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's okay, but... For you really need to make sure that it's related to your pathway in some way, right? So if you just happen to luck out, congratulations. So just to make sure the chi-squared table and table with phenotypic classes should not be in the results section. No, no tables, no figures, no nothing except for words in the results section. We have 20 likes. Am I a true millennial now that we're on YouTube? <laughs> no, I'm not a millennial. I'm a, I was born in the 1996. 
Oh. Uh, year two. Yeah. Four years missed it. It looks like the questions have come to a stop. Yeah, we're at 61. We're slowly losing people. Yeah. All right, guys. Oh, 62? Did somebody just get here? All right, for that one person who just got here, um, please ask a question. It'll be one of the questions we've already done. <laughs> All right. Okay, well, guys, if you uh, have no more questions, well, we'll do this again. Yeah, so, yeah, we'll so, again. so look for uh, emails from me from the TAs about how we're going to do things online. Right. Oh wait, on the rubric, Caleb Milborn. I think these are new guys. On the rubric, it states in the results that we need to explain why the experiment was conducted. Well, Shouldn't sure. that be um, wait on the? What do you mean? Why the experiment was conducted? Uh, give us the biological reasoning. Right. So, yeah, you have, there has to be, and again, this is something we talked about in lecture as to what is the rationale for the experiment? Why did you do that? What, what, you don't, you're not, you're going to explain what was the purpose of the experiment and what results you got. That is, that's basically. Will this, how our future lectures be held? Maybe. Uh, we don't know yet. So it could be that we do we use this channel to deliver lectures. We may pre-record them and upload them, or make, maybe have them live at some point. We may do this again once a week or whatever. See, I like this because it's super convenient. I can chill here. Sure. You guys can chill in your office. We can do the live streams. They can just watch it, or maybe they don't even want to watch it. They watch it like one in the morning when they're yeah. chilling, eating some cereal, you know, after work. I've been there. So, I mean, definitely the lectures will be online somehow. Thank you for the information. Stay safe. Oh, Killa, Killa Instinct 87. All right. Thank you, Killa Instinct 87. Yes. Yes. I hope you stay safe too, Killa Instinct. I hope your Killa Instinct um, goes well for you out there in the corona world. I'm ready for ultra centrifugation. Can you not delete the stream? I'm never no, going to delete the stream. We're not. We, like we've mentioned, we're going to archive it in this channel yeah. and upload so, new ones. So yeah, for those of you who accidentally came earlier today when I was testing it out, I did delete that one, but we're no longer deleting anything else. Yeah. All right, guys. Have a wonderful day. I'm glad that you are all here. I'm glad that you're all safe. I hope you continue to be safe. Be careful out there. I know that a lot of you guys are working right now or doing something, uh, hopefully staying home and staying clean and safe. Um, so, oh, another one. Caleb, you don't want us to go. So for Wild Type 1, it would be fully appropriate to state the reason for the experiment was to see whether or not our mutation was dominant or recessive. Yeah, sure. Yeah, that's right. All right. Yeah. All right. Let's call it a day. It's uh, six thirty. Yep. We're losing people like dead flies. Yeah. Oh yeah, like the ones in the lab. Okay, guys. All right. Have we'll we'll nice do night. this again soon and look for announcements from us. Bye bye. bye.